sweeping. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Sunday with Ola 78. Wasn't that wow. intro completely lit? Did you know I'm a huge fan of Souls games? I'm currently playing Elden Ring. I have over 90 hours worth of gameplay today when I'm recording this. When you're watching this on a Sunday, it's probably up to like 150 hours. It's so much fun, man. Can, can we just agree? Everyone just agree it's the game of the year? Probably. Probably. Most likely. Probably. It's great. This t-shirt is available from OlaEnglandShop.com. Let's go. Anyways, guys, let's head on with Sunday with Ola. I hope you're having a great morning and day. And hope you guys, the team No Sleep and the chat... You guys are great. I'm using a new camera, by the way. That's a piece of news for you right there. How is it? How's the autofocus? Oh, there it is. Can you see the pimples and shit in my face? That's what matters. We probably have to blur a little bit of that pimples and shit. That's the new Panasonic GH6 right there. I'm trying out for the first time in this Sunday with Ola and let's just hope that it works. Let's talk some guitar related news. We've been seeing a fair bit, at least I have been seeing a fair bit of videos. All the YouTubers are talking about it. Are tube amps dying? Why, you ask? Well, because there's a, gonna be a shortage of vacuum tubes uh, from Russia. Seeing how the Russians uh, are sanctioning the, the export of the Russian goods. And uh, with that said, one of the biggest uh, vacuum tube factories are in Russia. And people are speculating that this might be the end of tube amplifiers. That we're not gonna see any more tube amplifiers after this. Fender already announced that they're doing half their production in regards of EVH amplifiers. It's just that we're not gonna see too many tubes. And tube amplifiers will become more and more expensive. With that said, tube amplifiers are dying. Well, the thing is that tube amplifiers were always kind of dying. With how guitar gear evolves and has evolved for the past 15 or 20 years we're seeing more and more modelers out there and modelers are starting to sound really really f***ing convincing i must say plugins sound really convincing nowadays what this russian export ban is gonna do is gonna basically make it a lot harder to get tubes obviously it's also gonna make brands that are making amplifiers it's gonna push them to develop something else and you know go over to modeling quicker you might so, so we're gonna see a quicker shift i don't think tube amplifiers will die out completely i mean there's there's always gonna be uh, the niche guy that's always gonna have a good sounding tube amplifier but the thing is that you know kids today that are playing guitar they're not really they, they never used a tube amplifier in the first place they use plugins and that's how you know people play guitar nowadays so it's just gonna be us old farts and turds that would be like, no, amplifiers will never die. You know? I actually went up to Toman and ordered a couple of tubes today. I'm not the kind of guy that stocks on tubes, but I ordered a bunch of tubes. Uh, they're still sort of available for a while. So if you have a tube amplifier and if you're really uh, nervous about the development, maybe go and buy the last pair of tubes. It says that the ban is going to go on for the rest of this year, but what happens after that? How, what about next year? It's a lot of flailing with my arms, just saying. I'm not too worried about this uh, embargo that's happening right now. There's obviously bigger problems in the world happening right now, okay? But we're not venturing into that, even though some guys out there are gonna be like, oh, oh, oh taking sides and... You know? But no, that's not gonna happen. I didn't... That, fake news. Alex Lifeson of, you know, Rush, baby, partners with Julian's Auctions to sell over 100 items of used guitar gear and Rush memorabilia. What? If you're a Rush fan, this is obviously the time right now to get some cool shit. But it's probably not gonna be that cheap, so let's check it out. We, we have YD Gibson ES355, uh, the main guitar he used throughout his decades spanning tenure in Rush. It can be heard on 16 of the band's studio albums from their 1974 self-titled debut to 1996 Test of Echo. And it's probably gonna sell at an auction for between 100 grand and uh, 100 and 200 grand. So easy, if you want to own a piece of history, close this small box right there and uh, you can purchase a guitar easily for, uh, you know, 100 grand. It's easy, it's easy man, it's easy, just buy it. 
Oh no, it was the Henter uh, Sportscaster that was gonna sell for 100 to 200 grand. Okay, okay, no problem, no problem. Oh, the Gibson is estimated to sell for around 200 and 300 grand. So, okay, okay, a little bit more expensive. You just have to open up your wallet a little bit more. But it, it's cool, man. You can get some iconic guitars if you're into Rush. I mean, this is your this is your opportunity right here. I thought it was pretty cool. All right, Kramer unveils. The SM1H, the latest evolution of its hot rodded stage master model. Okay. Kramer, Gibson, Kramer, Gibson, Gibson, Kramer. Whatever. All I know is that these colors look sick. They have a silver, they have a gold, yellow, and a, a purple. And I think these three colors right here, they work very well together. I mean, look at that. What is that? It's like this gold that I have right here, I think. It, this one looks more like an aged gold, while this is more like a, a fancy gold right there. I think it looks cool. There's something about gold and guitars, man. This has been one of my favorite guitars since we released it, just because of the finish. Maybe it just looks very good on camera. Hello, look at that. There's a camera over there. How many cameras do I have today? Four. Okay, the colors are Buzzsaw Gold, Shockwave Purple, and Tronia Silver finish. Okay, cool, man. Floyd Rose and all, one bridge pickup. I mean, what more do you need today? Nothing. Line 6 is a brand. Hello, did you know this? No? Okay. Well, they released three new plugins absolutely catered for the metal guy. I'm the metal guy. Let's check it out. They have one called Doom. They have one called Modern. They have one called Thrash. Okay. And yeah, I can see on this one, Thrash. It's uh, basically, it's a Mesa. It's a Mark right there. So I'm, I kind of, I want to hear. I want to hear this. How do I hear this? They have the bad oh okay, so they have the vitriol, the rev generator, badonk archetype, archetype, das benzene, <laughs> doom, mandarin rocker, moon, the sunno, I guess, Cali for rivet clean. Okay, 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 okay. Click click to hear samples. I want to hear samples. See the archetype, I think that's the PRS Archon they're referring to. But can they call it the archetype? You know, Neural DSP? Their whole fucking signature line of plugins is called the archetype. Yes, uh, I kind of want to hear the metal aspect. This is a metal plugin. There's only clean samples. What? Okay, Badonk. Here we go. I remember the Badonk being one of my favorite amp models in the Helix. Genty, man. Okay, Rev Generator. I wonder who's doing the, the clips for them. I wonder if it's John Brown on Monuments. It kind of sounds like it. Okay, Vitriol, what's that? PV Invective Amplifier, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. This is very confusing. The demos are very confusing. Let's just check out this demonstration. Metallurgy Collection. I just want to find out, is, is it something I need to get? There's just so many plugins out there, man. Uh, this was actually a really good demo because he's playing all the amplifiers, so that's cool. I. Mildly excited. Should I get? I probably. All right. ESP unveils ultra limited handcrafted pyrograph Nosferati. Uh, Nosferato. Only 15 on the Dimitri Dino uh, Dino Muradian design guitars will be made, each carrying a hand burned image of Nosferato from the 1922 film and a host of high end appointment. Take a look at that collector's item. How much is it? Uh, I'm just interested in the prices, man. Uh, ESP is available for 14 grand. No, 18 grand. Holy shit. Okay. I'm seeing a lot of these one off custom shop builds happening right now. And you know why? I think because, because of the pandemic, it, it's not as easy as before. The production times are longer. Everything costs more to ship nowadays. And a lot of guitar brands are kind of raising the prices a little bit. At this moment right here where we're, we don't really know what's going to happen. Unless like, you know, the, the, uh, the industry kind of gets back on track within a couple of years. But it's probably a really good time right now to release, you know, high end, really wacky custom shop jobs just for the marketing aspect alone. I talked about the Fender guitars last week, which were insanely priced. And, you know, that doesn't matter. There's probably going to be a store somewhere that buys these really expensive guitars. There, there, there's going to be a buyer somewhere. In a marketing aspect, it's really f***ing smart. All the exposure that these guys are getting from, you know, doing something like this, it's, it's, it's really worth the money. Just saying. All right, can we talk about Elden Ring? Well, if you don't like it, please leave, okay? Okay, we all agree that Elden Ring uh, is the game of the year. Okay, so it's completely okay for me to talk about it. 
do you guys want to see me stream that game? No, you don't. F no, you don't want that. Okay, but Rivers on Nihil or Nihil is uh, blasting away to the Elden Ring song, the theme song. But no, Facebook and their cookies. No. Oh, I. What? I can still listen, but if I want to see the video, I have to allow it. I'm not going to allow it, so I'm just going to let this stay right here. Just imagine that this screen is not here. Great music in all the Souls games, by the way. I actually thought this would do more for me in an emotional aspect, but... That's pretty cool, though. Damn. Can you mod the game so you can get this blast speed version instead in the intro text? Damn. I wonder how many hours of Elden Ring he has on his belt. Alright guys, calm down. Calm down. You have nothing to worry about. The Lars Ulrich toilet. It got purchased by a Danish museum. That's all, <laughs> that's all I can say. That's it, right there. Oh, it's sold to the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in Copenhagen. According to the Tampa Times, the toilet was briefly installed at the Brass Mug in Tampa, Florida. Oh shit, I played there! What? Before I assumed the establishment went out of business due to permanent, uh, permanent mental scarring incurred by anyone that saw it when they opened the door. Now it's on its way to Denmark to be displayed and not used. Which is better or worse, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, f***ing hell, that is, that is absolutely terrible. Uh, <laughs> I'm so happy that people can enjoy this masterpiece now at a museum. Really. All right, last but not least for the news, Netflix posted a trailer for a new metal comedy, Metal Lords. And when I read this headline, I'm like, okay, this is not going to be good. So we better watch the trailer together, okay? From the producer of Game of Thrones and Harold and Kamar. Okay. Tom Morello. Okay. They do it. No doubt. Oh, he's using a loop station? What? What was that for? Nothing personal. Um... I'm... Sorry. That was inappropriate. I'm just cringing real hard right now. I'm I get... I'm getting you. goosebumps. You know what's good? There's a Netflix series and show with heavy metal in it. So if kids Ooh. like this... Maybe can bring in more people into heavy metal. That's a good thing. Metal. Take off the costume, Krusty the Clown. <laughs> There's nothing to say, man. Have fun. That was the news. All right, so as you might have seen, there hasn't really been uh, too many Mel mornings happening lately. It, we're, we're taking our time with the Mel mornings. I told you guys that we're not going to do them as often as before. It's just how our time kind of rolled out right now. We just haven't had a Mel morning in a while. But, but I figured I would uh, talk a little bit about uh, album tips in Sunday with Ola. Just continue on whenever I fucking want to tip you guys off uh, an, about an album. Why not just pull into a swallow? Why not? So I'm going to talk about uh, neighborino of mine because he's in Norway. I live in Sweden. Owain, uh, Eivind. And I have never talked about Owain. And truth be told, I haven't properly listened to Owain until one guy told me to listen. That's how it works. That, just tipped me off. And he told me to check out the new 2021 EP called uh, YOLO. Like, if you're into guitar instrumental music, it's really captivating. Really captivating. I wish I had a small little ounce of talent that this dude does. Because he's playing guitar, he's playing keyboards, he's, he's arranging all this amazing music. It's just, it just blows me away. So, this YOLO EP volume number one. Just check it out, man. Listen to the song Snow. There it is, Snow. <laughs> Just really tasty lead work. And even though there's a lot of, you know, jigma jig jigs bing ding ding on the drums, it's still very soft and very like. It's perfect to just li sit and listen to while, uh, you know, sitting and answering an email to some angry guy who's like, oh, you know, well, you suck. And I'm like, oh. You know, sitting listening to this music and I'm trying to answer the email like, no, you know what? I don't suck. It's you that suck. Okay? Thank you, sir. And I'm... It's just great for that type of, of work right there. So, 
Oh Wayne, YOLO, I put a link in the description to this, you can go listen Ok? Good, thank you Album tips Alright, before we end, I want to answer the question of the day uh, That's also something I haven't done in a good while But then again, you know, those, that's what the FAQs are for But the FAQs aren't really happening So I might as well just bring in one question each Son of a Fall, I used to keep keep talking, you know, a lot of people have been saying that oh, they think that this wall is a little short now well, you know, I'm just keeping it easy, you know, simple anyways, question of the day from Obski Unit 23 hey Ola, I've noticed that a lot of new guitars and metal bands playing guitars with only one pick why is that? and what is the advantage of using one pick? I think that he's probably talking about a pickup that, that's I'm just guessing and I'm gonna answer it as if he was meaning a pickup on the guitar so yes, okay, a lot of new metal guitars they only have one pickup in the guitar basically just a bridge pickup it's not very uncommon, it's not anything new I mean Max Cavalera was very early on just removing the neck pickup altogether just having a bridge pickup and you know just a, just a volume knob even sometimes not even a volume knob just completely, you know, nothing no electronics, just the pickup and the output it's not a new trend but it might have become fairly popular, I mean if you're a rhythm guitar player for instance there's very seldom that you use a neck pickup I'm a firm believer in that the, the more electronics you have it's gonna be more likely that something fails at some point so just having a bridge pickup and nothing else I mean, how much can fail in that? just like zero cables, no not zero cables, but a couple of cables but if you have like different split modes and the different uh, finger bobs on the guitar with uh, piezo or whatever there's gonna be a lot of cables, a lot of electronics that can, you know, go wrong so, uh, but in my opinion, uh, guitars with one pickup I, I don't have one right now, but they look insane too I agree, they do look very very metal so, is it a trend? no, it's not a trend uh, now, if your question was regarding just playing with one pick I, I haven't heard about people using more than one pick at the same time, like how would you do that? I think it's like this maybe... oh, maybe it's like if you're in, in a black metal band you hold guitar picks like this you can play with more than one pick, okay, okay, I got this look at that, there you go that worked so well thank you so much for the question anyways guys that's it for Sunday with Ola. Tomorrow there will be a Swola Contenders. If you want to participate in the Sunday with Ola Riff Challenge, you can download the drums from the intro in this description and make your own riffs. Upload yourself playing that to YouTube. Tag it with Swola and the number. And I might check you out in the Swola Contenders video. Tomorrow I'm checking out the contributions from the Swola 77. Okay. So if you download the drums in this video, you have one week to make something and upload. Okay. So Thank you so much for watching. Pix hasn't done shit, she's just tired. Pixie. She's sleeping on the drum kit. Maybe that's a sign that I should play the drum kit. Hey, Porte. The most tired dog in the world. I don't know if you noticed this, but she's, she's put a lot of muscle weight she really likes to run in the forest so she's put on a lot of muscle weight anyways guys, thank you so much for watching I'll see you tomorrow on the Swola Contender 77 goodbye